evening all, or morning, whatever time you're watching this. Um, I've wanted to do this for a little while and it's taken me a bit of time to get my setup right, but I'm kind of really excited with uh, how I've got my hardware and devices and various things sort of talking to each other. Uh, and I wanted to share it with you. And I know a lot of people use their iPad for making sounds, but find it difficult to get it into the sequencer or they're not sure how to connect it up. So I thought I'd give a little talk through as to the equipment that I've got and what I'm using currently. And then just an example of how particularly patterning, which we've got over here, can almost be your workhorse for all your MIDI to manage all of your hardware and software. Well, at least eight channels of it. So, um, as you can see, I've got the iPad, which um, I picked up a new iPad Pro 2 yesterday, 10.5 uh, version, which is running beautifully well. Um, I've got my fantastic BassBot uh, TT303. I also picked up a Nord Drum 2, which I've been uh, playing with as well, which has just been amazing. Um, and at the heart of it all is, oh, I can't see it very well, can I zoom in? No, uh, is this little beauty here. And this is the iConnect Audio 4 Plus. Now, it took me a while to get the configuration worked out because it's quite complicated, or it can be if you're not as, uh, if you're a bit thick like me. But what this does is that it will manage uh, two inputs, uh, your computer and your iPad and four analog inputs on the front. So I've got the 303, I've got the drum machine, and I've got a uh, 909 here, and I've got a Waldorf pulse there, which I'm not really using at the moment for this, and they're all running into the front. And what that means is that uh, um, as I control the, uh, the MIDI via a keyboard as well, that I, basically you just play and you hear it. And this is such a revelation when you're working in Logic and even Bitwig or other uh, sequences, Ableton as well. The faff of setting up can be really awkward sometimes and this sound card has just been an absolute lifesaver. And it's about 240 quid, which I think is really, really cheap. Um, so uh, it also relies on a second powered USB hub and that's where you plug your USB devices in and so everything's talking to each other. Just again to give you a, a bit of an idea, this is the software for it and so you get different mixing desk setups, you can route things as you want, uh, you can set up this really complicated patch bay uh, which I don't touch too much um, but it's quite important. And then there's all your audio info and if you wanted to uh, route your various MIDI devices, things like that. If you're really interested in iPad music and working it into your door or even using your iPad as the main hub for managing uh, your hardware and, your, and some, some of the iPad software, this is a fantastic tool, the iConnect Audio 4 Plus. Anyway, so what we're going to have a look at is patterning, uh, which we've got here, which I'm just going to bring forward a little bit. Now I'm recording uh, the audio, it's obviously coming through the speakers, but I'm also recording any sound that's made onto an MP3, so I'm going to layer it over the top, so hopefully you get to hear some decent audio. Now what this is doing, this little beauty, because it's running into this uh, sound card, it's kind of acting as the host. And what I'm able to do is trigger um, uh, my drum machine and my 303 and internal synths uh, inside um, uh, the iPad as well. So just to give you an example, I've got a simple kick pattern here. Let's play it. And this, as you can see, is triggering the Nord drum. And I could then, uh, and we do this by going to the settings here. So we can see under MIDI, it's going to the iConnect for DIN. Uh, so basically the MIDI port, not the USB. And it's going to channel 10. Uh, if I now go to my second sound, I could start to trigger And again, we can see 
part two is being triggered, and so on and so forth. Now what I've got on this, if you don't know patterning particularly, is this has got a uh, automatic um, kind of revolution, so it turns itself around uh, in different ways, which I find just absolutely amazing. Um, we can also do some really exciting stuff. So I'm going to go back to the first pattern that I wrote. So for example, I put this bass line in, and what you're able to do is randomize the MIDI. Uh, so it's randomizing both the gate length and the pitch. So if I just solo this in the mixer, you see it's triggering part six. It's really lovely kind of low tom. And if I go back to the pattern, can you see that the MIDI note is being uh, randomized based on these two notes. Oh, it's just so good. It just does all the work for you. It's absolutely amazing. Okay, so we can also, uh, we can also, um, hold on a second, I'm getting lost. We can also trigger synths inside uh, uh, the iPad as well. So let's just unmute things. We've got a couple of internal sounds too, so we're going to come on to those. And let's just play the file back. And that's pretty much triggering everything on the Nord. So it's sounding really, really sexy, I think. Very, very organic. Let's have a look at our file, and let's have a look at a couple of the muted ones. So this is also triggering 303. Uh, and you can see I've got it on the setting of both. So it's playing both the sound and the 303. And let's see what it sounds like. And you can see the 303 is lighting up. I'm not hearing anything. Why am I hearing anything? Oh, I know why. So basically these notes are triggering 303 and I can tweak this Solo it and see what it's doing. Again, you can see all of the. Ah, I need to get a bit closer. You can see all of the randomized content on the right hand side. That's what makes it so exciting. If we turn it down. Go. It's all on one note. So why is this so good? Because it now means that your pattern can mimic one of your percussion patterns. We've actually got both sounds playing, which is great. So if we go back to the sample, we can hear what that sounds like as well. Uh, let's go to the mixer. just get the sense that they're working together really nicely. Oh, joyous. Uh, and so we can also trigger internal sounds, not internal sounds, but other synths uh, on the iPad. So if we go to the clap and go to the MIDI, we can see, uh, no, wrong track. Here we go. So this track here, which is muted, is going to trigger the ISEM, the Arturia ISEM. If we unmute it. If 
And you can see we've got some randomization going on on the MIDI transport. Very weird. And I can come into here. Whoops. So I'm not saying this is necessarily going to be a, you know, world-class release. But you get the idea that patterning, which I, for 20 quid is just so unbelievably powerful, um, could become the hub or a hub of um, uh, managing your MIDI data for your hardware and your internal sounds and things like uh, drum modules if you have them. And the fact that the sound card can then just handle all of this and with the mixer on there, basically just records it. I'm using Audio Hijack to manage the audio, but of course you could put this into your sequence, uh, into your um, sequencer, yeah, Logic or uh, Ableton and track everything. So there you go. I hope I haven't uh, bored you too much and I hope you find that useful, uh, but it's kind of breathed new life into how I can um, put really interesting organic tracks together and patterning cannot be recommended enough.